What's up, everybody? I'm David Hain. Welcome to episode 23 of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. I'd like to give a big shout out to listeners from Sacramento, California, Rochester, New York, and Columbus, Ohio. I also want to thank those of you who are sending anchor messages to me in response to podcast episodes. I really appreciate it, and I'll be playing those messages in upcoming episodes. If you have any questions, I'll get back to you personally and use the topic in a future podcast. We'll begin this talk on aftercare right after this message I received that inspired this episode. Hi, Dave. Hey, yeah, no, your passion for the work that God has called you to do is amazing. Um, You know, seeing people being delivered or set free and hearing the testimonies really tell us how committed you are to the call of God in your life. And again, I'm still saying there's one thing that really depresses me. I'm working at a maximum prison and I see, you know, people giving their lives to the Lord and um, changing. But then after some time when they go to medium, then they fall back and they relapse and they do all sorts of things again. That hurts me and I feel that I, 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 I'm failing somewhere, somehow. I need something more to can give to these people more love, more wisdom, more understanding of how to deal with them so that they can sustain whatever they receive from the, from the Lord. I don't know. Please help. Welcome back. This episode is entitled, Walk With Me, Looking at Aftercare from the Addict's Perspective. Aftercare, by definition, is caring for a person after something, often after discharge from an institution, such as rehab or a treatment program or incarceration or hospitalization. But let's make a new definition for today's episode, okay? I want to look at it from the eyes of an addict struggling to establish sobriety. So for this episode, aftercare will be an addict saying, how do I find someone to walk with me in my recovery? What must I do to maintain relationship so that the person still cares for me and doesn't walk away in frustration or disappointment? How will they know I'm serious about my recovery? What must I do to increase my chances of success on this journey? And where do I start? Whew, that's a lot of questions. Well, I'm going to give you a four-part answer. So number one is get connected and stay connected. Comedian George Carlin once said, just cause you got the monkey off your back doesn't mean the circus has left town. This is so true of addiction. Just because we go to detox or get clean and sober for a month doesn't mean the battle's over, doesn't mean the circus left town. The craziness, the cravings, the confusion, The stress and doubt show up every day with a new act to play to get us to relapse. You might be thinking, how do I even invite anyone to walk with me in this whirlwind? And when I get up the courage, how do I know this is the right person to ask? Well, I do want to encourage you to take that step. Look for someone who has experience in addiction or an understanding of pain like you've been through. Look for someone who's available when you need them. Look for someone you feel you can trust and who is willing to trust you. Look for someone who will be as open with you as you are with them. And as you find this person to walk with, Also find a group or regularly scheduled meeting that you can join. This could be a 12-step meeting 
or it could be a group going through my From Ashes to Destiny workbook. The group may be meeting in a community center, an outpatient treatment center, a church, in someone's home, in a coffee shop, or online. But you can't simply be at a meeting. You need to be involved. You must be open to listening intently, to learning, and to expressing your thoughts and feelings in this safe place. After years of isolation and numbing all emotions and feelings, you will find growth and healing through expressing your feelings and identifying with the feeling of others. Before you know it, you'll be building a strong support system. You will have friends who understand and care and want you to succeed. You will have a sponsor or mentor who will work the steps with you. Well, what if you get stuck on a step? What if you feel like you're not ready to go there? I want to ask you, and this is what your sponsor or mentor should ask you, is it that you're not ready or that you're not willing? A good sponsor will let you know that for some steps you don't need to be ready. You need to be willing and that the sponsor will be that person ready to walk that step with you. Your sponsor needs to be that person who will understand and not judge you, but willing to walk with you. The second aspect I'd like to talk about is deal with your memories. From the movie The Last Full Measure, a character describes how he returned home from the Vietnam War wounded and on a stretcher and was taken right to the VA hospital. While he was in hospital, his mom packed up all of his military stuff in his GI duffel bag and put it up in the attic so he couldn't see it again and he could start fresh when he got released from the hospital. But to be truly healed, we need to unpack our duffel bag of memories and reminders. We need to process each memento, find closure, and move forward healed. Don't let your memories stay in a duffel bag in the attic, and don't let that become your life sentence. It's time for parole. It's time for freedom from your past. You can't change your past, but you can change your perspective. You can create new memories, happy memories, even in the sad place. We need to take the shame, the denial, and the anger at ourselves and others and let it go. The third aspect in this new look at aftercare is develop a plan. Confucius once said, it doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. So in this aspect, make a recovery plan and have a sponsor to assist you and evaluate your progress. A recovery plan includes goals, short and long term, with actions to achieve each one, a way to track your progress, and the goals need to be updated regularly. These plans and goals can include reconnecting with social services, finding a place to live, finding a job, learning to budget and pay off debt such as child support or costs and fines, making amends, and many, many other things. In my From Ashes to Destiny curriculum, we use the outline from Jeremiah 31 for our plan. There are four steps to it. Number one is set up signposts. These are like billboards or fridge magnets warning you not to go that way again. 
Number two, make landmarks. These are like altars in the desert. They're reminders of the progress that you've made and the miracles that you have received so far. Number three, set your heart on the highway before you. Not just your mind or your hope, but setting your heart on this path that is lying in front of you called recovery. Number four, return to God's original plan for you. It's still there waiting for you. What was your dream as a child? It's still there waiting for you. The fourth and final aspect is learn to be satisfied. Making the transition of learning to be satisfied is not an easy step. In our addiction, it's like we play the Rolling Stones song on continual repeat. I can't get no satisfaction. I can't get no satisfaction. Because I try, and I try, and I try, and I try. You see, in our addiction, we are always seeking instant gratification and never finding satisfaction no matter how hard we try. We forget what satisfaction actually feels like. Satisfaction involves fulfillment and that feeling of fulfillment. It's a feeling that we've actually attained something that is more than temporary, that we have something to hold on to and it will not slip out of our grasp. I'm here to tell you today, satisfaction can be found in recovery. Listen to the words of American actor Rob Lowe. He said, Being in recovery has given me everything of value that I have in my life. Integrity, honesty, fearlessness, faith, a relationship with God, and most of all, gratitude. Are you ready for that? And for those of you listening who are eager to be sponsors and mentors, are you ready to help someone in recovery find those things that Rob Lowe found? Well, I want to challenge you to begin to keep a daily gratitude journal. Discuss the things you're grateful for with your friends, family, and sponsor. Celebrate how far you've come on your journey of recovery. Build those landmarks to remember your progress. You might be surprised to find that one day you can say what Spanish artist Salvador Dali once said. And I quote, There are some days when I think I'm going to die of an overdose of satisfaction. Thanks for listening to this episode of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. Tune in Monday for our next episode entitled, Do You Believe in Magic? If you'd like to contact me regarding a Q&A session on addiction, speaking engagements, addiction coaching or consulting, or to utilize the From A to D curriculum and podcasts in your location, please go on my website www.fromatod.org and click on the contact page or leave me a message on Anchor. As always, stay safe and stay strong.